Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Today we are going to discuss some of uh, comments mentioned by atheists, by Christians, by you know the scientist. Uh, you know, uh, I, I will start with a comment uh, made by a Christian supposedly. You know, there is there is only one thing always I I want people to notice. There is people they go to school. And there's people who earn degree, but they earn, and I'm not insulting the person by the way, but this is the way I talk. I hope he understand. You know, I'm not trying to insult you. I do not know you. I, you know, this is, how, this is the way I express myself. So there's people who earn degree and they think when they earn a degree, <clears throat> they are educated. And there's people who don't even have a degree, but they use a gift. It's called the brain. Many don't even think about this brain for a second. They don't want to use it. And I will give you an example. So we go to school and we start learning. And then in school, they teach us things. And those things, you know, uh, they stay with us for the rest of our life. Okay. Here we have Mr. Or I don't know if it's a lady or a gentleman. Doesn't matter really says I'm a Christian here I like uh, uh, your video arguing against Islam and you seem very uh, well educated but you not seem very well versed in biology <laughs> okay since you mispresent evolution here you should read up upon it it's science it's very interesting although your demonstration is very funny <laughs> I have to admit <laughs> I have to admit too. I don't see any why evolution should contradict Christianity. The stories in Genesis, in my opinion, should not be taken literally. But that's a whole other uh, discussion. Okay, go into discussion now. Let us see how I don't know and how I am really mispresenting whatever. A theory is not hypotheus. Okay, it's something you make up to explain thing. Okay without having any proof uh-huh a theory is backed up with evidence <laughs> you know either is my i know like my english is very funny i know but how you say it's backed up with evidence and you call it theory I advise you to read your words or if you are a person who talk some people they should say their words in their head before they say them because you will sound silly how it's a theory and it's backed up with evidence the second you reach the point of evidence it's not a theory no more as an example I'm not a doctor in biology, but I have a degree in law. I'm, you know, I'm qualified to work as a lawyer or a judge. And somebody pro provide me evidence. Uh, and the evidence is, uh, you know, let's say the guy, he confessed that he killed the guy. Is that a theory that he killed the guy anymore or it's a fact now? For sure, in science, the story is different, but evidence is evidence. I cannot say there is evidence unless it is evidence. I cannot even call it evidence as long it is not. So as long it's proven, as long it's 100% true, then, then we can call it evidence. So look what you just said. A theory is backed up with evidence. Does this mean that there is evidence that is 100% true? <laughs> so, okay, you are telling me I mispresent and I don't understand. And now you are telling me that your scientists, the one you are supporting their a theory, they present evidence which is not 100% true. What does that mean? It means it's full of lies, it's full of mistakes. Or it's me, maybe 
because you are in, you know let us say you are not educated and somebody can fool you and that will make it like sound to be true it's like a smart being speaking to a uneducated being and the smart being was able to provide evidence which fit with the little brain of the little bean too much bean here huh? i hope that one up goes guys So I wish sometime people they read what they say because what they say is extremely silly. And then they say, no, science, scientific method and our uh, recipation are flawed, okay, but it's the best we have to explain something. At the moment you use those scientific method too, okay. When you show the uh, inconsistency of the in the Quran, uh, for an example, <clears throat> okay, can you show me the consistency in the in the theory of uh, of Darwin? If there's any, you see, when somebody says there's evidence, if there's any evidence that a, a monkey uh, he improved himself, he became a human. You see, later he start talking about uh, the improvement of uh, organs. Read carefully with me. Here he says, second. Evolution improves organism. Sorry, or, 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 organisms. <laughs> Excuse my English. You should not orgasm. <laughs> no organism. Not orgasm, be careful. <laughs> okay so anyway so like this is the theory it's the you, you improve okay so let's see we as a human we have heart problem uh, we have heart attack and the heart attack usually happen either either by a clot in the blood or even sometime the brain send the message to shut down the heart you know like when the, uh, the brain feel like the body in a, in a, in a trouble and there is a certain uh, uh, let us say uh, uh, message is coming to the brain the brain give the heart an order to shut down in order to prevent something from happening but this is a kind of uh, you know causing death it's not really helping the heart it's not helping the human it is causing death to the human being so how a human being after all the improvement he went through billions of years, according to you, and you claim to be Christian. He reached the point that he killed himself. Do you have any idea? Because remember, you are a Darwinism Christian, supposedly, which is very funny, and this is totally against the Bible, and I will show you how ignorant you are about the Bible, too. Because what is the proof? After a billion of years, according to you and Mr. Darwinism, Darwin, a human being, he cannot fight bacteria. He, he fail. He fail miserably. You need to, you know, look for medicine, you know, and this medicine, it failed too. I mean, the, the bacteria is always way ahead of us, and they come with a new solution against your solution. And your solution is not your body. Usually your body is not really functioning the perfect way to, to fight the, you know, otherwise nobody would die. So the improvement you are talking about is a false theory because there is no improvement. And human being used to die by heart attack thousand of years ago, and he died by heart attack thousand of years after. And he will die in a heart attack million of years after. Nothing will change or brain attack or whatever. There's a million reasons to die. One of them is your mother-in-law. So the improvement theory is not true. I can say there is, you know, remember in the last video I said, if a person who live in the mountains, because the mountains, let us say high, high mountains, not just a normal mountain, you know, a very high top mountain, uh, his body adopt a certain kind of oxygen, which means he, you know, if, if you move to the mountain area, 
in the beginning you will, you will not feel comfortable when you breathe why because your lung is easy able to collect the oxygen which is needed in whatever air the lung is getting from outside but when you are in the mountains your lung have to work harder have to bring more air so I can say I accept this but I don't accept that the lung used to be something or let us say improve itself by being something else what Darwinism is about that there is selective of nature and there is this nature is going to kill uh, uh, the species which is not improved or let us say lack an improvement and the one it's improved itself will survive but this is absolutely false because the same species is still there even the one uh, there is animals they, they are they are dead uh, there is no reason for them as an example there is many animals distinct because we kill them which means there is a predator you know human being is a predator uh, for those animals but there is uh, some kind of creatures we kill them every day like cockroaches but you know they are the over uh, victorious why because the way they are made you know they have a very high number of a breathing and they can resist heat they can resist uh, 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 even like I mean you, you burn the whole house to get rid of the cockroaches and you will find them still under, under the, the dust so uh, but they did not improve themselves this is how they are a cockroach was a cockroach he was not a duck the way his system is built I do not need improvement he can survive even a nuclear war. We cannot. So the theory of uh, of uh, of this idiot Darwin, and sadly to see that you are a Christian and you believe in such a stupid thing, because if you know the Bible very well, you should know that according to the Bible, people used to live for long, long time, hundred of years. So the theory of improvement it's working in the opposite direction. When somebody used to live for 100, 800 years or 900 years, and now we live for 60, after all, like the, the, the care we have and doctors and hospitals and x-ray and machines and computers and vaccine and blah, 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 and then people die. So before, people used to stay younger and live longer. So uh, uh, if a person, according to the Bible, he lived for 600 years, that's mean when he was, uh, let us say, 300 years, he's like 30 for us. So what is the improvement? Now, either you believe in the Bible or you say, I don't believe in the Bible. So don't mix the stupidity, which you call it science, with non-science, which is nonsense. You see, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professor in biology, as you said to me in the, in the, in the comment, you said you have a lack of, uh, uh, you know, education in biology, you do not know biology, you know? Well, you know, I have a limited knowledge in many things. And there's, I have an extreme knowledge in some stuff. But I'm not required to be a professor in biology to know that this is a stupid idea because no one has control of his body and you are an example can you fix yourself can you get how your body will give an order to itself I mean who is the what is the brain in the body and do you know what is the brain so let us say that the brain does not exist the cell the first cell is the brain but as long as the cell, each one of them is have a specialty. So how the cell, which is specialized in something, as an example, we have white cell in the blood and we have red cells. <clears throat> Can the white cell improve itself and its defense by uh, figuring out that in the future there is a, a virus will be called cuckoo? 
and prepare for that? No. The virus have to come first, and then have to go and fight with it, and then whatever mechanism it's already she have of the cell, the white cell, uh, she will use. So either she win or she lose. If she win, now she learned about this enemy, and she learned how to fight him better because already she fought him already. She have an experience with him, but she cannot create a new mechanism unless you get involved and you give medicine and etc and you to support the fight like giving an emission to someone he is out of an emission so why the cells are not able to improve themselves in health aspect still people they have diseases the same diseases cancer is killing two uh, in some places two of every five Can you imagine which means five of us here two of us we might have cancer do you see how horrible the situation is with cancer? So why a human being is not improving himself after all those millions of years they claim in Darwinism? Obviously cancer is the biggest enemy. And science cannot really... Um, uh, uh, trying to find a solution. Sometimes, you know, they succeed, they bend in uh, how, let us say, advanced the case as they say. But sometimes there is no way to fix it. But anyway, as long as I'm not a doctor and I am not a professor, I you know I just went to YouTube just a minute ago. <clears throat> I did not watch the whole video actually, but this is a professor. His name is uh, Michael uh, Behe. I'm not sure if I'm saying the name correctly. And he have a PhD and he is a professor you know for biochemistry at whatever university. Are you going to say to him that you are an idiot, you are stupid, you do not know, you don't have education? You see, the most time they say to somebody uh, trying to de debate them, you say to them, you do not know Arabic. You did the same. You did exactly the same. You do not know Arabic. Or you do not know uh, biology. But my friend, this has nothing to do even with, with just knowing the biology. It's about simple thinking. You are just assuming, assuming no evidence. When you say to me, we found an animal, he looked like that animal, that's different animal. What is the proof that this is the same animal? What is the proof that this is the ancestor of this animal? I mean, if you go to your yard and you look at the insect, it's, it's scary how many insects there is. Each one of them is look different. This video here, it says, so you people can, actually I have the link underneath of the video here to give them a credit. Uh, this is from a website, a channel is called TP, uh, TFP Student uh, Action. And it says, expert destroy Darwin theory in five minutes. Is he qualified to talk about biology? Or he is like Christian Prince what he learned from biology is what he learned in high school. Let us see. So he is having a, he have a trap for a mice in his hand. And he will show you from the tra trap of the mice, how all the theory of, of, uh, of uh, Darwin is, is, a, is a silly theory. And he is ignorant. He will show you how Darwin is ignorant only is it complex. It's what I called irreducibly complex. You can't take a part away and still have it work. If you took away this hammer, you know, the mice don't get caught, take away the spring or the holding bar, any of the pieces, it, it doesn't work. Now the problem for Darwin's theory is, is that, number one, the molecular foundation of life is is run by machines. The cell is run by actual machines made out of molecules. People <laughs> find that fantastic, but hey, that's that's the way it is. There are little machines that act like uh, outboard motors that can propel cells along, and other machines that carry cargo from one part of a cell to another. And those machines, just like pretty much any machine, and including the mousetrap have a number of different parts, 
performing different roles, and they're all needed for the machine to work. Darwin's theory of uh, evolution requires that natural selection favor an organism that has a very small change that helps the organism do something better. So if we're taking that view of Darwinism, we can ask how could something like this, something like a mousetrap, be put together one tiny step at a time? And it turns out <laughs> it's surprisingly difficult. You, you know, if you just had the wooden platform, just the bottom, that doesn't catch mice. If you put on, say, this, this holding bar, you might say, well, maybe if a mouse is running along, it would trip on the platform and impale itself on the holding bar. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of just silly. Uh, so this can't be made gradually. So you know, this is what I said in the previous video. How the permission is going to decide to be something else in the future. And you know the permission is still permission, nothing changed. It's very silly. But when the silly person, he is sponsored by a mafia of anti-God and they promote his idea everywhere, in schools, in universities, everywhere, like now. If you say Islam is wonderful, they will put you in TV. If you say Islam is peace, if you are a, a, a person who claim to be a Christian priest and say Islam is, a, you know, they believe in the same God you believe in, everybody will come you. But the second you say the truth, Everybody will fight you. Have you ever heard them quoting in TV somebody saying something negative about Islam? When the last time they did? Have you ever seen uh, Facebook sponsoring, supporting, not taking down pages? Have you ever seen YouTube? You know, here we go, I cannot take donation here. But the person who preached jihad, we can collect donation. They never take donation from them. Not even they don't even flag their videos. So was God created Adam as Adam, and he was, or, or he was something else, and he improved himself? Was God created a snake? That God was created a. Uh, trees, the, the God created, and what, what are you talking about? You say, I'm a Christian and I believe in such a thing. There's no proof of such, and if you change one thing, and no way a cell can decide to change. You see, cell is a program, is a little brain, and this brain does what it's programmed for. It cannot make a new decision out of the program. Very simple. It's like your computer, you have, a, you have a mouse, and the mouse, this mouse, how you use it, if you click here, something will appear in your screen, and you click at the window, that window will open. In order to change this the mouse, how it works, you have to reprogram the whole software. You cannot do like one step at a time, that is, that, is a, that is a joke. Especially you know and I everybody knows that it's impossible first. You are assuming that the cell have a brain and That the brain Make a meeting Hey, we have a problem here. We are going to make an improvement and this improvement is going to take a million year How silly how stupid Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And then here, this professor, I don't know, he's a Muslim, he's an, uh, sorry, I mean, he's a Christian, he's an atheist, I have no idea. But this is about science, this is just a pure science. He continued and saying, how stupid was uh, uh, Darwin? He don't know even the basic of biology. So that's a big problem for Darwin's theory because pretty much the foundation of life, these things are, are all over the place. And furthermore, you can ask yourself, well, how do we recognize intelligence? And it turns out that the way that we recognize intelligence 
is by what I call the purposeful arrangement of parts. And that's when different parts are put up in relationship to each other, where you can see that they have a purpose. That is, the arrangement has a purpose. An easy example are letters in a word. You know, people put the letters in to form a word, words to make a sentence, and so on. And not only is this arrangement, uh, this can't be put together gradually, but we immediately see that the arrangement of these parts has a purpose. And so we immediately grasp the intelligence that was needed to produce something like this. And again, I can't emphasize enough that Darwin didn't know anything about the foundation of life. He and his contemporaries thought that the cell was a little piece of jello, protoplasm, they'd call it. And it was mysterious, you know, did cool stuff, but they didn't know how, so they pretty much ignored it. But uh, modern science has shown that it's, the cell is a lot like a ultra-sophisticated nanoscale factory, far, far beyond anything that humans could produce. And anyway, that's enough for me. So, you know, uh, like, you know, yesterday I mentioned that scientists, even the majority of them, they are against of this. The question is, how they are teaching it in every school? You know what I mean? Who is behind supporting this theory? I mean, I live in the Middle East. I grow up in the Middle East. I get my first education in the Middle East. And then I learn this in the Middle East, in the heart of Islamic countries. Who is behind sponsoring this false theory? And for a generation, everybody adopted as if it's God talking. That's it. This is true. Darwin, he found, the same as Zul Qurnayn, he found the sun set in murky water. And the more we learn, the more we know that this was a joke. That was a stupid. Yesterday, actually, I thought about evolution. I said to myself, can I order my cells to look like better? I mean, I woke up in the morning... And I convinced myself, like, you know what, because I order my sales, like, to make me look better, you know, like, you know, so, I mean, come on, very frustrating, you know? And I, like, I don't have a mirror at home. Uh, I, don't, I don't use mirrors because I don't want to get scared, you know, like uh, something scary, you know? Uh, but I have a mirror in the car, so I went to the car and I look, and I still the same. What a disappointing thing. But I've been promised that after a billion year, I will look better because I ordered my cells to make me improve. So like, this is the part of the good news, you know, like, you know, we have hope, you know? And hey, uh, ladies, females, if you, I know all of you, you would make up, come on, don't, don't, don't lie about it. I mean, come on, you know, yeah, 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 come on. So you would make up, why you don't, why you want to do that? Why you don't order the cells of your face? You look better. Your eyes will get bigger if you want, or you make them smaller if you like. Huh? Your nose, like you can take him to the right a little bit or the left upside, or whatever you don't. I mean, come on, the cells they will improve themselves. Okay, you know what? You can improve many things. After a billion year, look, the, the women is still a woman after a billion year, if there is a billion year, as they claim. And why a human being is still stupid if, 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 if we can improve the sales? I mean, how do you explain all the stupidity we see around us, including your comment? So if a human being, I mean, look, you said, is, is the evidence 100 true? Like, what the heck? So why you call it evident? How evidence, they can be called evidence and they are, you are agreeing they are not 100% true. So they are evidence, but only 70% true. And 30% are not. But then the whole evidence is gone because evidence cannot be evidence because evidence, the whole thing have to complete each other to make it an evidence. Does this mean there is evidence that is 100% true. I mean, who is talking here? Somebody, are you, are you like, well, I don't know what you are eating, man.
and the improves of organ orgasms uh, uh, you know like it's it's a it's a joke because there is no such a thing and nothing really changed and you are trying to compare animals to other animals saying this was used to be this one but we have still that one and that one is different why all the monkeys the same monkeys i mean why in the world the monkey want to be a monkey All what he need to do, he changed his look, he joined Democrat, and he voted for, you know what, the only proof uh, for uh, 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 evolution you have is the Sleepy Joe. I saw like, I saw like an animal who is so slow, you know, in his sleep, when he, in the middle of, uh, he's eating his sleep, you know. Uh, Sleepy Joe. Is that the evolution you're talking about? This is a cat. But after some time, the cat, she will turn into a dog. Because it's better to be a dog. And the cat will, uh, you know, improve the organ, or like, what is that? So, you see, Darwinism is not only improving of, of uh, if it's about a changing of a species to be something else. Secondly, the decision of such a thing to happen is impossible because that will break the whole system. You can't do little change, what little change? And who is the one who will decide to make little change? What is the, what is the brain who is making that decision? Did you find it? And you are talking about biology? I find it extremely silly when people they try to defend this funny, stupid, silly theory. It's embarrassment actually for a man for, for the brain of a human being. You know, in school we learned that when the apple fell down, he saw the apple in the tree, and then he they come to the conclusion, okay, so the big object will, the gravity will work this way, the big object will, will grab the small object, and now they discover this is not always true. If it is too small, the big object will not have impact on it. The smaller it is, the harder for the gravity to, to, to take it down. This is why we have dust flying. It can fly for for days before I settle it down because there's no nothing moving it. Why? Because it's so light. You go in your basement, you look at the window of your basement when the sun is there. You will find billions of little tiny things flying. Like what the heck is that? Shouldn't the earth grab it? Isn't it the gravity grabbing everything is a flying? Unless there is a resistance? Like somebody flying with wings or engine, like airplane? Why they are not coming down? Well, how that will happen over years? Look at this guy. I, uh, we, we just get you a scientist and he is laughing at it and we can show you a, a million scientists laughing at this theory how does change will happen you did not tell us how who is going to make the change who is going to make the decision you know uh, when when last time i speak about the permission which is the simple you know the most simple uh, uh, let us say uh, cell So this simple cell is going to change. No problem, we will go with your stupidity. And I call it stupidity. But who is going to make decision that this is, this is the, the final product will be after a billion year? Because remember, you are not changing little, you are changing to change everything later. The improvement it's about deleting some 
and keeping some. But in order to do such a thing, there is a brain have to be the designer of the future product, the final product that was going to be after a billion year. Who is the one is making that decision? Are we listening? This cat is uh, scary. No, she is laughing at the theory. She's like, I told her, you know, <laughs> I told her it used to be a dog. <laughs> Actually, I told her her future, you know. I sent her WhatsApp because those are evolution uh, attack cats. They are high tech, you know, they are not like they are, they are from the Silicon Valley. So I told her, this is after a billion year. This is how you look like, you know, you will wear pajama and you will become a dog finally okay you will not stay as a cat because now you are improving yourself you are going to a higher level and even there's a donkey you know the neighbor you have a donkey i told him you will be a horse just wait you know you are you, are, you, you you're working it just just be just be you know like a, a, like a, don't give up you are a donkey but a million years from now you will become a horse because you are improving yourself it's just a little touch here and there, and you will, you know, you will, you will change. I don't want to talk about this anymore, but I find that those people are really silly, yet they claim to be educated. Uh, and actually, I find them very much like Muslims. You know, they surrender themselves without thinking, and suddenly they became like scientists too. Like you have a lack of... Uh, and understanding of the theory. No, I don't. It's you who don't understand what you are saying. Evidence is evidence. If evidence cannot be true, 100%, you don't call it evidence. Call it case study, call it research project, call it whatever, but this is not evidence then. Either it's 100% true, or it's not. We're talking about science here, not metaphorical things. Like, I can bring a verse in a book, doesn't matter what book, somebody make a statement. And each one of us give us different interpretation. Because it can have many meaning, but it's not science. But when it's come to science, that's it. We cannot have a billion interpretation for a phrase of science. I don't know why the Chinese, you know, when the Chinese, they say he left, he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. I don't know who said that. This is against Darwin evolution. I mean, come on. He left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. No, he can come as a horse. But just wait a billion years from now. He will improve his organ, you know, organs and he will be, you know, he will change it the way his lips is. He will come, become bigger, taller, you know. Yeah. And he, even his voice will change. Uh, so if you are a person who believe in this and the funny he says uh, you know the, the the story in Genesis we don't take it uh, literally what the story of Genesis have to do with this anyway secondly who are you to decide what is literally or not and, or like how you can confirm you are the person who speak about science how you can confirm that it's not meant to be literally now, you see, I'm just going with you. I mean, a person who want to use his brain. Who is the one who decides if this is literally or not? You see, the one who wrote the words is the only one who can tell if he meant literally or not. You're not you, not me. So again, you try to make assumption, and you are just a person look like you're a person looking for a solution by assumption and you call it evidence and the improvement of a human being is not is not true a human being became more ugly more disgusting 
more evil, more sick. He's not getting better. Not, in, in, not even close to be better. And if you go and study a human being, let us say you're a person who believe in a billions of years, and they say to you, they find like some bodies, or they are, they look close to human, but they are not a human, you know, whatever it is. What happened? They improved themselves and they became, what happened after the improvement? They die? They vanished? If we take a human being history, like the maximum we have, maybe 5,000 years. Okay, a human being 5,000 years ago, he was different from a human being now? How much improvement we have in 5,000 years? Where is, where is the improvement? So don't take what those people, you know, like we send our children to school, yes. But in our schools, we have idiots who teach you how to be an idiot, not to how to be smart. Don't take what teachers, they say to you for granted. And when I say teacher, it doesn't matter, including me. If I am teaching you something, search it, study it, think about it. Otherwise, you are just an idiot. You are just a receiver machine. You receive, and whatever people say to you, you take it. I went to school, and I heard the teacher, and he did not convince me for a second. I found it very stupid and very silly. And the proof that a human being is not, not, not doing the evolution is you adopting a theory and teaching it as a fact. The same as you do with the Big Bang. Every school teaching the Big Bang, but there's no proof of it. There's no proof whatsoever. You know, there is a, a telescope, I think it was in California. They were receiving messages from the space brother. The news, TV station talk about it. In certain time in the day, they are receiving messages. Alien are contacting with us. CIA. They could not explain it. NASA, they confirm it. We are receiving communication from aliens. It's true. And after 22 years, they found that it was a microwave in the building. When a guy, he go to make a coffee, they received that message. So they did fool people for more than 20 years about receiving messages and they need translators and they want to study the language and the language is consistent each time we receive the same exact thing and how we can you know translate this and blah 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 and then it turned to be a guy making coffee with the microwave and when the microwave broke the messages stopped A microwave. How many hours in TV they spend? How much money they make from this propaganda, this lie? There's an alien, the Bigfoot man. There's a Bigfoot in my backyard. So I find that those, you know, uh, uh, they claim to be scientists, but you know, people, they are attached to mystery, attached to fictions, you know, they love it. Just say to them, alien, like spaceship, there's a spaceship, uh, you know, seen by the Navy. I mean, can you really believe it? That the Navy, and they have a radar, and they have missiles the most advanced, and they will see something flying in the top of them, and they will not shoot it down? Especially it's confirmed that it's not an airline. Or what, they will just watch? I mean, who is the stupid here? <laughs> you know what I mean? So imagine, imagine 
that we have uh, like an air, uh, uh, airplane carrier cost billions and trillions of dollars. And then we allow a spaceship, brother, to fly in the top of us and we take, we record it by the phone, right by the phone. Or even by the radar. And we do nothing about it. But what if, the, what if this is from the enemy? He wanna shoot you. How they enter our space, how we allow them. Since when you, you Amer the American, they allow some something to enter their space and let it go with all the advanced weapon we have. What a joke. And then every TV station talk about it and the dummy and the funny, you know, like right now, space, you type spaceship. If I, if I say right now, change the title, I saw a spaceship in my backyard, I will have a million view by the end of the day. If I say a Christian prince, he get improved in looking, nobody will look. Because they, they will know, still look bad. People, they love fictions, they love stupidity. This is why if you make a video about the Batman, the guy, he jumped from a building to building. I mean, nobody question how the guy, he jumped. And this is the evolution. It's in your head. I mean, the guy, he make like what? He make like something come from his fingers? And what is that? I say, Spider-Man is Spider-Man, come on. The man who became a spider, very easy. So what, what, what is complicated about it? I mean, why it's hard to believe? First, it's an American movie, which is must be true. Like American, you know, movies, American heroes, they're gone. It's, it's like a Turkish uh, actor in Turkey. He, he was appearing in all the movies. All the movies of Turkey, he is the only, uh, he is the only hero. He is the only lover. It's like James Bond, you know, like, uh, uh, that's what people like. They love stupidity. They enjoy it, they relax with it. It's, they love the fantasy of the stupidity. And maybe this evolution thing give them like a, uh, like, a, let's say, a comfort zone of who used to, who he used to be. It's, 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 a, it's like fill up some empty space in the vacuum machine we have in our head. We have to fill it up with something to make it believe in something. Even if it's stupid and there's no proof of it. Uh, thank you for those who say nice words to me. I apologize if I don't answer to you, answer you. I know you do not need me to say nice things to you. Yeah, I said, no, Spider-Man is, uh, Spider is real, man. Don't be sad. Okay? I mean, and, and they talk about science. You see, everything is exist for a reason. Even the machines we make, we made them for a reason. Very simple method to understand things. But in order to make a design, you, you, don't, you don't design a spaceship by thinking first about uh, making a fire. No, we did not reach the spaceship by making a step by step. Spaceship, all of it is one design. It's different way even if, of a flying from an airplane. So if one thing, if we decide to take one screw from the spaceship, the spaceship most likely is going to fail because that screw is exists there for a reason. It's holding something. You take it off, something wrong will go. Like we Middle Eastern, when we buy something, let us say you order something online, you order the table, you know? Uh, you don't, we don't read the manual, you know, like the manual, sorry. We, we never read manual. And then you start putting things together, like you put screws here, screws there, you know? And then you find after you finish putting the table and the chairs, you find like there's 50 screws are not needed. <laughs> they are extra. Or you take a part from the car, and then when you put it back, you find like they have five screws extra. Like, where did they come from? <laughs> uh, somebody saying to me, did you finish your high school? Uh, to be honest with you, they, they, they fired me before I finished the high school. Uh, but, and I did the exam by myself, you know, because they fired me from the school. Are you happy now? 
So I used to be fired for anything happening in the school, even if it's not me. Because like, you know, you have a reputation. Anything happened, they will say it's him. Are you happy now? And you finish your high school? Yeah, I finished high school. But the only certificate I have is a driving license. Are you happy now? You are the educated one. You are the one who's smart. Yeah, they fired me. They fired me from the whole country high school. You know. Because I was like, you know, a very, very good person <laughs> in the school. <laughs> actually, I was, you know, but I mean, I'm I, I like a, a revolutionary person, let us say. I don't accept things is not right. And I flip things upside down on them. But anyway, with the school, without school, who cares? I finish my high school, I get a good grade, I join university, I finish my university, I finish my master's degree, blah, 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 blah. School, teachers never make you as smart. It is you who work in yourself. Not even books make you smart. Because what if the book is written by an idiot? What if this book is full of false information? Most of, most of the books, actually, are written by, you know, by idiots. Especially, you know, like uh, philosophy books, you know? The philosophy, like, well, you know, philosophy, what, what is philosophy? Philosophy is how to play with words. I mean, and, and, and a smart person try to play with the mind of a fool. That is philosophy. Someone is more intelligent, he can use ideas together in order to convince someone he is not fit for that person. That they call him philosopher. But when you read a book of a philosopher, you find that after reading his book, you are more confused from before reading the book. So what's the point of this philosophy? Do you remember the, 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 the Arabian guy who went to learn logic? First time he joined, that, you know, they introduced logic in the Middle East, this is new. So the guy, he, you know, he asked the teacher, hey sir, what is logic? What is this class about logic? Philosophy and logic, what is that? The teacher, he said, logic is to learn about something from knowing something else, something you do not know, from something you know. The student, he's still confused, he said, like what, how? He said, okay, I will ask you a question. So he said to him, do you have a chain? Chain, you know, like, at home? The guy, he said, yes. The teacher, he said, as long as you have a chain, that's when you have a dog. He said, yeah, that's true. He said, as long as you have a chain and you have a dog, that's mean you have a yard. He said, absolutely. He said, as long as you have a chain, you have a dog, you have a yard, that's mean you have a nice house. He said, yes, sir, you are right. He said, as long as you are a chain, you have a chain, you have a dog, you have a yard, you have a nice house, that's mean there is somebody who have to take care of all this house, and that's your mother. He said, absolutely, you are correct. And because she, you have a chain, and you have a dog, and you have a yard, and you have a big house, and your mother taking off it, from here we learn that your mother, she is a good woman. The student was astonished. So the teacher says, see, from asking you about the chain, we were able to know that your mother is good. Now, the idiot, he learned, he learned philosophy and logic. So he went out of the school, he just learned philosophy and logic. So the first person he met in the street, he said to him, do you have a chain? He said, no, he said, your mother is a whore. Like what? Well, this is what he learned. If you have a chain, your mother is good. What about the person who don't have a chain? So every human being, he understands his logic based in his stupidity, not his intelligence. The teacher was smarter than the student, but he is more stupid than the student. Because what the chain have to do with having a dog? There's a billion things to use to, for the chain. But when you are a fool, anyone can use you and abuse you. And when you are a fool, you learn your own logic. And you create your own fancy logic. But not necessarily is true. The logic of a Muslim that he prayed to Allah five times a day and then Allah will make his penis endless. There's more than a billion human beings, they are convinced with it. True, it's true, brother, logical. 
But nobody want to ask himself, okay, how in the world I want to walk with this penis which is endless? I mean, I'm going to walk backward or forward? Backward is possible because you drag it, you know, I mean, I don't want to go in details. So, I advise people when you before you say things, start try to try to think, you know, try to use your brain. God, He gave us a brain, and all of us, not certain people, no, that's not true. All of you can be extreme smart. All what you need to do is use the gift. Don't be just a follower. Nothing wrong, by the way, by being a follower. But follow someone smart. So you can learn from him how to get smarter. Associating with donkey will not make you a horse and will not make you smarter. If I sit with a smart person for five minutes, and those five minutes is going to be very useful five minutes for me because he is smarter than me, more educated than me. I will have a benefit of sitting with this person. But when I sit with an idiot for five years, I will graduate as an idiot like him because he will take me down. He will take me backward. He will teach me things I should not do. You associate with someone, he think that drugs is good. What you would do after associating, living with this person or thinking it's, you agree with him after some time because it's fun. It's what he told you. It's fun. You take drugs. How many of you here smoke? How many of you people smoke? Don't be shy, it's okay. If you smoke, give us one, please. And don't forget, I'm not, I mean, don't worry, I'm not going to say anything bad about you. How many of you smoke? Nobody here smoke? Like, come on. See, they are... For the last time, who is here smoke? Otherwise, I will smoke you. <laughs> I used to be smoke for five years. Okay, I don't know how are you. Uh, humble <coughs> warrior, he said I do. My friend, humble. Question I want you to ask yourself. Why you smoke? What is the benefit? And what is the purpose? Do you believe in the evolution too? Like after smoking, you will turn a different person? Actually, this is what they try to do to you when you were a kid. There is a video actually about a person, he is teaching you how to be confident. I made a video about it before, if you remember. He said, you put, he was like describing a guy in a movie, how he is so powerful, like how he put a leg in the top of the other leg. Oof, mean, that is something. And then he asked her if she have a light and he grabbed a cigarette. Look at this. So this guy in this video, he is teaching you how to be a confident man who attract women to you. How you attract women? You wear shiny shoes. And you put the right leg in the top of the other one. And then you grab from your left pocket, jacket pocket, your cigarette box. And you ask the lady, do you have a light? And she look at you. She cannot resist, that's it. She, you have a cigarette in your hand, but it's not in fire yet. And now she will fire you up. Because she cannot resist, that's it. So this is how they fool the, the, you know, the, the people. This is, how, this is the guy is giving you advice in YouTube how to be a self-confident. A cigarette will make you self-confident. You know, when I used to go hunting, I never take a gun with me, I take a cigarette. 
I mean, who care about like if a bear come to you or a hyena or come on, I will take the cigarette. I look at the bear. The bear is like will be scared. He will be attracted to me actually. He will like chase me, but he will not hurt me because I have a cigarette. I'm confident now. I mean, what? How in the world this logic work? How those people function? So my friend, those who smoke, ask yourself why you smoke. You're burning. You know, once I I went with a friend. You know, we were like uh, you know went for hunting, and he have his wife with him, and I he have his cigarette box. I took the cigarette box and I threw it in the fire. He gets so upset. He said, why do you do that? What I'm going to buy a cigarette box now when you are in the middle of nowhere? I said, didn't you buy it to burn it? He said, what? I said, didn't you buy this box to burn it? I just burn it for you. This is exactly what you do. You spend your money to burn it. Why a human being want? You don't want to use his brain. You are not only burning your money, you are burning your lung, your, your lung, you are burning your body, you smell bad, you smell like, like a chimney. And in the age of 50, 40, you will not be able to run for 10 meters. So why you do it? So you see, because they convince us in certain time that this is what will make me look like a man or that will make you look like an attractive woman. So they start smoking. Now you go in the in the in the street. You see everybody using the hookah. You know the hookah in the Middle East. We call it shisha. So the shisha of the Muslims coming all over in America and in Europe. Those young kids who they are smoking this stupid thing, which is very disgusting, very dangerous, very harmful. But because not only you who smoke, you will hurt everyone around you. You are literally drinking a box, smoking a box of cigarette. When you do it why people do that to themselves what is their intelligence what happened what is the improvement is that how we improve our life we smoke we take drugs what is those cells of uh, Darwin they are not working because look like the cell, it makes decision and the decision is always right. But this is not the story. This is not the story. Human being getting more and more, you know, behind. He's not getting smarter. He's not even getting close to be smart. You will see a poor person, hardly he can afford to, to make living. Hardly he can make money to buy a sandwich in poor countries and he's smoking. Why in the world do you want to do that? You cannot even make living. You cannot even buy food. Why? How much money you burn? Drugs theme says, delete your pointless channel, bro. Okay, my friend, I took my advice. I decided to delete you from my channel. Take care. You see, I have my logic. And my logic is, I will use the first word you say to me delete and you are gone and the funny is that you are saying to me that my channel is pointless yet you are here so what point you were following when you came here the pointless so you go to YouTube looking for pointless channel to click there and join the chat and you subscribe because remember you have to subscribe first and then after you join the pointless channel you tell the guy who have a pointless channel delete your pointless channel because i'm here you know like what the heck i mean where do those people come to me from you know like when i learned english i i i saw in that in the text it says it's training cats and dogs I'm like what the heck training cats and dogs and then i heard the same sentence again from a British person saying to me it's raining cat and dogs outside I look outside like what 
think there's no cats, there's no dogs. So look like each one of us, he have his own logic and his own language. Cats and dogs mean something to him and mean something to me. So which one is the right one? Is that the evolution of language? That the rain became a dog and a cat? Here we go. The atheist will use it against me and they will say, see, you got yourself busted. When I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. And actually I feel sorry for people who associate with stupid ones. It hurt. You know, the, the, the thing I really fear is like to be like to, let us say, to be forced to be around people who they are stupid. I hate, I can, I, this, is, this is like a penalty for me. But for some, they will say, you are the stupid ones. We would hate to be around you. Ah, okay. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, uh, why you, were you smoking? No, I never smoke. I never smoke all my life. Never. Do I need to try cancer to know that cancer is wrong? Do I need to try poison to know that poison is wrong? From far distance, the smell is disgusting. I can't tell. There's no need for such a garbage. Is a cigarette is a, is a food? Is it, does it make you healthy? No, it's obvious. I mean, why even want to try the obvious poison? Are we listening? Why we need to try the obvious poison? If you are smoking, I, this is my advice to you. Go right now and take your all the cigarette you have. Throw it in the garbage. And never do it again. Buy your life. Buy your health. You are going to be a big, big customer for hospitals. They will suck your blood when you get sick. And then you can take back neither the money you spend for cigarette, neither your health. Anything is not normal, is not right. Anything is not normal, is not right. So you, when the Bible speak about eating food, etc., even those things that was for your health, when they ask Jesus about the Sabbath, he says, look, you know, they are, you, your, your disciples, they are breaking the Sabbath. Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. So always ask yourself, is that made for the man or you are made for it? The answer in the case of cigarette and drugs, you are made for it. You decide to be a slave of it. God made Sabbath for you so you can rest, you can be healthy. God do not need Sabbath. It's you who need Sabbath. So you will not be greedy working 24 hours, seven days a week, seeking money and wealth. So. It forced you to take a break. Stop, this is not right. So the break, which is was a command by God, was for your health. So why you are fighting your own health? And atheism is against your health. If you don't believe me, go right now and search for a city, it's called Philadelphia, which is 95, 97% atheist. It's a city of zombie. The whole city in drugs. It's very sad. They took the Bible from the school. They teach the children that Bible is a book of fiction. Jesus is not true. God is, is, a, is a lie. And the result is Philadelphia. The city of death. Go check it out. Go search on YouTube. Go search what the atheists do. They do to themselves. If they cannot do good to, the, to themselves, how they can do good to you? And watch what they do to your children too. They will poison their head.
Philadelphia. The city of drugs. How far the evil reach? How do people reach that point? Very sad point. Very easy. Atheism. God is a fiction. Morality is a joke. Live as you wish. Drugs is okay. Oh, we strike. We need marijuana. Everybody have the right to have marijuana. Okay, everybody have the right to have marijuana. And then what? This is the city. Look at this women. They stand in the street. They start either looking down or looking up. Why? You don't know. And they stay there for 15, 20 minutes. A city of zombie. All of them, they believe in, the, in Darwin. All of them, they believe in the evolution of Darwin. All of them, they are atheists. They are, they are believers in Darwinism. They've been taught. How sad, how scary. You take the Bible away, destruction come. And then what is going to take place? Either drugs and atheism or the cult of Muhammad. Both of them, they would self-destruction. Did you see the Afghani trying to climb the mountains by tens of thousands running away from Taliban? They are running from Islam. This is the truth. Did you see millions trying to cross the borders to go to Europe? They are running from Islam. This is the truth. Time, time will come. Actually, the time come already. Atheists are running by thousands and thousands from California. The exodus of atheism. Because their state fail. Do you know how it, it is because of atheism? Very simple, go and search what is the percentage of atheists in the city. And then you will get the answer. So why the city is like this? You tell them there's no right or wrong. You tell them go have sex as much as you want, with anyone you want, even with your sister, even with your mom. There's no God. And then the kid, he go in the street. What, what is in the street? You destroy everything sound to protect him exist you just told them there's no such a thing in california they are they were discussing having sex with the children to make it legal so a man is 30 he can have sex with, with like muhammad with six years old girl how you know it is atheism i mean do you i need to be a genius Take God from your house away. Your house will turn evil. Very simple, very easy. All of us, all of us, we are tempted to do evil. All of us. But what will prevent me from going, like let us say, inside the box? Maybe sometime I like try to open the box or get close to it or even open it, put my hand there. But what is preventing me from jumping inside the box and live inside the box of evil. It's God who always telling me that this is evil, this is wrong. I feel guilt. When I do wrong, I feel guilt. Atheism kill your guilt. Atheism Kill it. Look what this woman doing. She's on drugs. Why her head in the, in the, in the, in the, you don't know. That's it. She is living in different world. She is not under the control of herself. 
How they reach that point? Because they follow the Bible? No. Because their teacher taught them Bible is a book of lies. Jesus is not the one to follow. That is the truth. And this is why if you are a Christian, you have to be careful who your kids go on out with. Because one bad apple can destroy 25 good apples in the box. Take God from your house away. Your house will be the nest of the devil. As simple as that. How much advanced California is? All the high-tech companies are there. But it's the city of homeless, the, the state of homeless. I mean, if you say, if I type for you now, you know, uh, you know, let's search for homeless, California. I mean, you will not believe it. You will think that you are going to Somalia or like you are going to Afghanistan. Afghanistan don't have homeless like, like in California. I mean, except how millions in Afghanistan, they are running away now. You drive in the street, you go like you go to see the beach in California. What do you see in the beach? Look at this. Look at this. This is America. This is the most rich country in the world. What happened? Because they gave control to the idiots. They want to open the border for everybody. Everybody is welcome. And then they have no money, nobody, because everybody is welfare. The government itself is bankrupt. After all the tax to collect from Google, from Facebook, from the biggest, biggest giant who control even the whole media in the world, still they are short of money. If it's possible, learn some Indonesian language. I know Indonesian. I can. You, you, you think I do not know Indonesian? My friend, listen. There are some people who they are very humble. And they don't tell you that they know the language because they are humble. You know what I'm saying, my friend? Yeah. So if somebody told you I do not Indonesian, he's wrong. I can prove it to you in a second, you know? But they don't want to do that, you know, like uh, Muhammad, he is a genius, he's a doctor, but he's a prophet. They ask him for a miracle, but he don't want to do that, but he can do miracles, you know, I mean, come on. It's very easy, you know. So, uh, don't go there. Uh, actually, uh, a Muslim, he made a comment about the intelligence of Allah. So, I don't know if I should continue and maybe I should make a separate video. Maybe tomorrow or the day after, we will see. Or maybe I will make a video, like I will hang up on this one and we come back and we... What do you think, guys? Give me an idea. You know, like the Shia, they believe that Al-Hassan, he speaks 70 million language. 70, 70 million? I forgot the number. But it's 70. I, think, I don't know, 70,000 or 70 million? I think 70 million. Yeah, I think 70 million. Something like that. Which is normal. I mean, come on. I mean, my grandfather, he used to speak 80 million languages. We are Arab, we do, we do speak all languages in the world. You know? Like, last time I went to China, and the guy, he said, in the in the customs, he said, uh, I will call translator for you. I said to him, what are you talking about? Ching hong, hi hong. You know, like, stop here, like, don't, you know, like, the guy, for sure, he gets scared, especially when he saw my fingers coming, like, you know, like, grossly. He said, okay, there's no need for a translator then, so, you know. So it's very easy, like, oh, come on, we speak Japanese, Korean, you know, all languages. Very simple, you know. Why, why we will not, uh, you know, and may Allah forgive you for your sin. I mean, have you ever heard of a God who says, may Allah forgive you for your sin? <laughs> I mean, you know, like when the Muslim, they say, because the, the Muslim who made the comment saying, how you can explain the intelligence of Allah? So I was going actually to make this video about that, but when I saw the comment of this guy, so I decided later I would do how you explain the intelligence of Allah. Look at this. 
that Allah may forgive your sin. Like, who is talking Allah? Do, do you see the intelligence? I mean, this is super, super intelligence. Even Joe Biden, he cannot come with such a sentence. You know the thing. May Allah forgive. Who is talking Allah? Uh, somebody asking a question. What do you think? Why are you making it big text, my friend? What do you think the tribe which ain't in contact with norm way of life? Aboriginal Australian tribes. Well, you know, the, you can you can search. There's an article written. In, in the internet about about those who they are they did not receive the word of God but if they receive the word of God and they are still rejecting then they have no excuse so based in the Bible like, like even if you let us say uh, we as a Christian we are not allowed to marry from non-Christian period so if somebody is marrying from non-Christian this is not a marriage this is not a marriage Christianity forbid marrying from non-Christians uh, and the Bible explains why you cannot join light and darkness in one house. And that is more healthy because simply you don't want the kids to be confused. You want to you want to have a family, you have a family of believers. Otherwise, you will have a problem sooner or later. However, if a person he marry, uh, let us say from those who left Islam after calling me, and they are married, and there is many of them. Okay, what he will do now? He will, he will divorce his wife because she's a Muslim? No. According to the Bible, he keep his wife. The Bible rejects destroying the house of anyone or destroying the family. So, because he was married from before the day he became a Christian, he can keep that marriage. But, he cannot keep for wives, you know. Uh, in the same time, if you are a person who live as a tribe in the middle of nowhere and you never met someone who teach you about the Bible or no, you don't speak the language and you never heard the, about the Bible or Jesus, then God will judge you by what he gave you. Whatever he gave you, your judgment is going to be by that. It's like it's not fair. Like let's say there's somebody have a, like they call it, like he have a syndrome, you know what they call it, syndrome something? So let us say we have a person, he has something like this, syndrome or disability. And someone is super smart. But it's not the fault of that guy who has a syndrome problem to be judged the same as that one. Let us say this person who has this illness, uh, or he's born this way, uh, he, is, he did something wrong. Uh, he even committed a crime. He, he shot somebody. But he, this guy, he doesn't know what he's doing. So is it right? Is it justice to judge this person as the same person who have a fault and he is capable of understanding what he's doing? Absolutely not. So God is about justice. God is not about just send this person to hell and this person to heaven. This one he believe in me and this one does not know. God is about justice. Justice will come first. So whoever delivered the law, by the law he was delivered will be judged. Not by Allah was not given to him. Do you understand me? Uh, Christian, I want to delete CP. Call him. I'm calling him. No answer. Why you want to call me? Who are you? And please delete me. What is that? Don't bring me your drama here. No drama. I know that some people here they come with a lot of a drama. Delete CP. You delete me. You don't call, you call him. Don't answer me. Uh, no, I don't answer you. Why would I answer you? Somebody told you I'm here to answer you. Somebody told you this is what I do. I'm here to refute Muslims. And by refuting them, Muslims and Christians and atheists and everybody learn not to talk to Christians. I don't even take, you know, take calls from Christian. Everybody knows. 
So take your drama and stay away from me. Uh, all right. Any anyone have, have any question before we finish for today? Anyone have a question? The whole world need the prayer. You see, my friend, the, the, the problem if we're with us as a Christians, we keep focusing too much in the prayer. But we forget the part in the Bible that says that, you know, prayer alone is not the way to solve things. You know, prayer have to be supported by work. So what some Christians, they do, uh, they focus in prayer. And they try to ignore the part which is working with the prayer. You see, when Jesus, he, he ordered his disciples, he did not say, go and pray to make the whole world believe in me. He did not say that. He said, go and teach and preach. Go, teach the whole world. He said to them, time will come and by, you know, by killing you, people will think they are doing favor to God. He did not say to them, go and pray that everything will be fixed. John the Baptist, he did not pray to God that the man who is going to sleep with the women, she is not lawful for him, he will stop. He shouted in the face of the man. He said to him, this is wrong. You cannot do that. And the price was, he, lay, you know, he lost his head. He killed him. So we as a Christian, sadly, many of us, we just, we keep saying, pray, I will pray for you. I pray, okay, a person is dying in front of my house and he have no money and he have no food and it is, it's cold. I will pray for you that God will send you a sandwich. So we as a Christians, we are going to be victorious by always being with God. And this is our prayer. The prayer of a human being, of a Christian person, is not by saying words. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. The Lord, he says, they praise me in vain with their lips, but their heart is evil. So. Be a person who pray to the Lord by the fruits. That is your prayer. Do something about it. The world is in trouble. Do something about it. Teach. Learn. Share. Don't be a person who just say, you know, like, yes, the Lord, he says, go to your closet and pray. But this is about something between you and the Lord relationship. But when it's come to fix this earth, you have to be a member of it. And the Messiah himself, he was challenged by the Jews, the hypocrite Jews, who said to him, okay, this is okay, should we pay a tax to Caesar? In the front of the Roman. And if you say no, the Roman will arrest you. If you say yes, the Jews will spit at you. Look what Jesus said. He said, do you have any money with you? He said, yeah. Said, Can you show it to me? Oh, sure. What is the picture in this thing? Oh, this is the picture of Caesar. Jesus said, give to Caesar what to Caesar. So you as a Christian, your prayer is your wisdom. Your prayer is your charity. Your prayer is your help. Your prayer is being good to others. Your prayer is not to be selfish. Your prayer is to be decent. Your prayer is to be truthful. Your prayer is to be a lawful person. Your prayer is to be someone he wish others what he wished to himself. Anything else is not a prayer.
because that will make it empty words. So the Lord, he says, be holy like your father. When you reach the point of going in that project, be holy like your father, you are for sure praying correctly. All right? So we don't want to be the same as the Jews who are just trying to trick us what we will say. If you say this, you go to jail. If you say that, the Jews will hate you. They thought they can try God. They thought they can over a small God. They can just throw him over the bridge. Well, oh, it will put him in trouble now. What he will say. But he showed them in a very extreme wisdom, same time how hypocrite they are. They don't want to pay tax to Caesar, but the money they use is the money of Caesar, printed by Caesar, made by Caesar, have the picture of Caesar, but yet they claim they are against the Roman. If you are against the Romans, so why you carry their money? Like all those Muslims, get death to America, but is what their favorite money is dollar. What is the favorite money of Taliban? Dollar. What is the favorite money of Saudi Arabia? Dollar. Where is their treasure is in dollar? Where they put their banks, their, 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 their money, their, their, their treasury, it's in the dollar. Most of it actually in the banks of America. Don't be false like those people. Again, why God gave Muslim oil and money? Okay, that's a, I mean, did, did God give them oil and money? What about all the oil we have here? We have oil more than all the Muslim together. We have money more than all the Muslim together. What are you talking about? USA and Russia is the most rich countries in the world. One income of USA is more than the budget of Saudi Arabia. With the money and the all their money is in the pocket of USA. You see, when you see rich countries and Muslim countries, this is because they have little population and too much oil. But the majority of Muslims are desperately poor. Bangladesh is the biggest Islamic country. You see, this is why sometimes people are, are blind. They think Muslims are rich. Muslims are the most poor people in the world. You are judging by like what a country in the size of a, of a tribe in the size of a village is that how you judge the rich and the poor this is Bangladesh do you see what the oil is doing the oil is just with little tiny number of the Muslims the rest are extremely poor This is a train. And not only that, you see, they have the oil, but they have no water. The price of liter of gas is twice more than the price of water. And that money actually is a curse. They go, they sleep around, they bring sex to their, you know, the uh, AIDS and etc. It's a curse. They lost. They lost any any good value they used to have as like a, you know uh, let us say Bedouin people. They have some good values. When the money comes, they lost that too. So first of all, money doesn't mean the blessing. If we are in USA and we are the the richest country in the world, doesn't mean that this is like what this what make USA is a good country. This is maybe in a financial way, you know, like, okay, you will have a better life to own a, a, a car, etc. But doesn't make it a good country unless there's good equality in it beside that, like freedom of speech, like what I'm saying now. I can make fun of the president. Take that away. America is not America. Yeah, but so, you know, this is what how people think, you know, average people, why the Muslims have uh, oil. Well, all of the Christians, a lot of Christian countries, they have oil. Who said it? Mexico have oil. Canada have oil. 
uh, Argentina have oil, Venezuela have oil. What are you talking about? And the oil we have in USA is more than all their oil together. We have gas is enough and same like Russia. So, well, people they say things I don't know. Very limited in their you know their their knowledge. You see, uh, Joe Biden came. He decided that's what the Democrat they do. They are silly. Oh, we will not uh, dig uh, for oil no more. Okay, and then the price of oil now is so expensive. Imagine now we are buying oil from abroad. We have oil for 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 million years to come. Stupid. I mean, those those Democrats are very weird. I don't know. I don't know even how a human being can can join such a party. <laughs> I mean, look at the hypocrisy. They are against. They wanna they wanna the global warming. Okay, we are global warming. We have, but still you are using cars, and still you are buying oil. So what the point? Make cars buy electricity. When you have them ready, take all the cars who use gas, and then that's it. But as long now we are using gas, we'll use your gas. Why you wanna send your money to Saudi Arabia? Stupid people, what you can say, my friend? When I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. Like imagine I have in my backyard a billion liter of gas. And then what I do? I go to the gas station to buy to buy to buy. <laughs> That is what Democrat is. Democrat is the most awkward. You know, I remember once I went uh, to do the voting, you know, in the election day. So the lady, you know, in the, like in the front door, she take you like to your table, you know, you know, she asks you uh, what, what, uh, what party you vote for. So she asked me, she said, you, you vote Democrat too, right? I said, no, I'm not stupid. You should see, she look at me like if somebody put like a, thousand you know gallon of cold water in her head she was like shocked when i said I said, i'm not stupid uh she said because i uh, you know you're where are you from i said from the middle east she said usually middle east and the actually this is what she said she said usually she said where are you from i said i am from the originally from the middle east she said so you vote democrat right i said no i'm not stupid <laughs> Oh boy. And I don't know, you get offended or not, I believe it's a stupid to be Democrat. I mean everything everything they aim for is wrong. Everything. Forget about Trump. I don't care about Trump. I'm not talking about Trump now. But Democrat is a is the party of stupidity. They don't want, you know, they want to they wanna fight the global warming, but they are using the most expensive cars. What is the car of Hillary Clinton? What is the car of Al Gore? What is the car? Of, we want to fight uh, global warming. Yeah. And how big is your house? How many light in it? How many air conditions? Did you stop using air conditions? How many of you don't use air conditions? I mean, what does it do? Just don't take me there, you know? It's a vomiting party. Uh, anyway. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys, you have a, a good time today. And again, you don't need to agree with me. I mean, who cares if you agree with me or not? You see, I'm here. I am the last one who care really who agree or don't you know sometimes people they say to me you use like a very plain language and it's kind of like offending let me tell you something very important the one who don't offend you it's mean he is not telling the truth if you have a friend he don't offend you it's mean he is not being at least natural with you he's being fake because the second you say something to me, viewed by me as something negative about me, it means you are not being hypocrite. At least, at least you told me how you think of me. At least you told me what you see on me, regardless if it's true or not. 
So people should appreciate a person who naturally speak to them. You know what I mean? Halala Center is a new business in Pakistan and UK. It's okay, I mean, this it's, it's just to fool, uh, to fool the fool. You know, Halal Bank and etc. This is, you know, they knew there is a market there. They invest, and I will not be surprised if the one who owned it is Jew. <laughs> Good for them. You know, you know uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, they have uh, shoes that have a sticker that said Halal. I mean, how in the world Halal shoes? So, you know, those who make shoes in Thailand or in Taiwan or whatever, they know that those Muslims, they will buy anything that says halal. So put it in the shoes, put it in the sardine, put it in the jacket, put it in the panty, put it in the bra, put it in the necklace. Just put the word halal, they buy it. But this is not about an expand of, uh, of a religion. This is about stupidity. You go to Muslim countries, they are number one customers for, for whiskey. Go and ask any Muslim. In the Middle East, the one who sell alcohol is the Christian. The one who buy it is the Muslims. You Rarely you find a Christian going to alcohol store to buy alcohol. Who is the customer? The Muslims. And what they enjoy about it, that the Christian, they live in their own territory. So when a Muslim, he drive there and he go to a Christian store and he buy alcohol, supposedly nobody will know him. But guess what? Because all the customers are Muslims, they meet there. But because now all of them, they are the same. So nobody will report anyone to other family. Like, you know, it's a, it's a hypocrisy religion. In Saudi Arabia, every year, hundreds of people, they die from drinking, you know, like perfume. Go search it in Google. They buy a lot of colonial and perfume, but not to use it for a smell, to drink it, and they die. Liver failure there is like crazy. Why? Because they are drinking wrong alcohol. Halala or halal, I don't know what halala is, but whatever it is. All those businesses is for a, for a purpose. A business always is created for a purpose, and the purpose is to take money from the pocket of the customer. So, whatever it is, you know. You see, and even some some scammers they do the same for the Christians. How many of you see a TV station? Call right now. Call right now and receive the blessing of God, so you can get. So if you call and give them donation, you receive the blessing of God. The door of heaven is open for you. The same as Muhammad, the same scam. So religion, it's a, it's, a, it's a great business for scammers. But the Lord, he said, be aware of false teachers who come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. Do you understand? So those, all of them, they are the same garbage. They target anyone he says to you that by making donation, God will forgive your sin. He is a fraud. He is a fraud. He is fooling you. We don't bribe God. The donation you make is not what will make your sin go. The Lord, he said, that from their fruit you shall know them. Not because if, if you if this is the purpose of your donation, that is, that is a fake fruit. Then that is false. You're trying to bribe God. You think you think God is like a uh, an officer in Pakistan. You give him ten rupees and he take down your ticket. That is the God of, of Muslims. In Islam, as you know, a Muslim he can bribe God. That's why Muhammad he says, "Who is going to give a mortgage to Allah? Have you ever heard of a God? You need mortgage." How you can give a mortgage to Allah? You can in Islam, you know. Muhammad, he want money, and he want a bunch of fool to give them money, and the promise is in heaven. In heaven, in heaven, Allah will give you 10 times more, 100 times more, 70 times more. And then the fool, the poor guy, he believe it. 
But if, if Allah is God, can't he just order the gold to come from the ground? Can't he turn the dust into gold and silver and rubies? Do he need really a mortgage? Be aware of those liars who do that. You know, uh, people they say to me, why you don't talk always about, you know, people uh, uh, giving you donation? Like, do I need to talk about it? If you want to support, support. Good things, people they do it because they are thinking of it. You do not need a reminder of doing good things if, if it's good things to you. But always remember, you don't support a cause because if you do that, God forgive your sin. You support a cause because God said, from their fruit, you shall know them. So this is automatic fruit will come from you because the good inside you will do good things by your hands. But not because you are trying to fix your sin by doing good. We don't believe in that. The good tree give good fruits. And never think for a second that you can bribe God. Ah, oh, muhallal, muhallal. Ah, okay. Well, he, he is using the, uh, the wrong word. This is muhallal, the donkey. So he will be the donkey and yeah. Anyway, I know what you are saying now. Uh, a Muslim guy, his name is Mr. Israfil, saying the following question. I like it when a Muslim, he start thinking. I hope he's, you are not getting hurt, my friend. Christian Prince. Why do you always bring up sex and penis? Do you think about that all the time? My friend, if there is something you want to tell us, yes, my friend, I will tell you that your God, he is the one who mentioned sex and penis, not me. So if your God, he spoke about it before I was born, that when you believe in Allah, Allah will give you 70 years orgasm. And when you believe in Allah, Allah will make your penis endless. So I'm going to give your question to Allah. Allah, are you trying to tell us something? And who is the one who was saying that? Your prophet. When you're a prophet, he speaks and he says, I was the most weak person between mankind and boom boom. And then I invoke my God Allah. He sent me a dish of shish kebab. I ate it. I get the power of 40 men. Muhammad, are you trying to tell us something? You are so cute. When you have a God, he described for you in your Quran that the women who will give you as a reward, they have big boobs. Allah, are you trying to tell us something? Hey, by the way, what is the connection between your God and big boobs? You see, you are the one who opened the topic, not me. It is a connection. I mean, you as a believer now, and the women Allah will give you, they have big boobs. If there is something Allah trying to tell us, I think there's a hiding message there, like size does matter. Hmm? Allah, are you trying to tell us something? Or what about a God? He described to us what is inside the vagina just to tempt us. And each time you sleep with them, Allah will put his finger there and he will make them virgin. Allah, are you trying to tell us something? So this is a silly Muslim trying to suppose like he's, he's getting you busted. Like, are you trying to tell us something? <laughs> All your religion is about sex. That's why I keep quoting sex. Because you have nothing there except sex. Uh, is that your God Allah book? <laughs> or um, did I say anything? It's not true? Abdul? What happened to this guy? He died? What kind of God, brother? He described for us what is inside the vagina. And what will happen to the vagina when you do boom, boom? Brother, do you think Allah is trying to tell us something? 
you know what uh, uh, Israfil your name is Israfil do you remember the story of Israfil Allah brother he wrote the Quran he put the tablet between his two eyes okay brother why he put the tablet between his two eyes because brother Israfil is horny and he will start looking at the version in the Quran and then he will start getting boom boom are you there Abdul? is that your God describing the vagina inside? Uh, is that your book? so when you ask me why I'm, I talk about sex because you have nothing in your religion about except sex if I believe in Allah and there's a prophet what I will get? penis, sex, vagina all of you are followers of a whole the whole idea of Islam is a whole even the black stone in the Kaaba is a vagina when you put your head inside it prove me wrong anyone can go right now and search you do not need to be genius I don't know I have a feeling that you are not a Muslim but you are trying to drag me to talk you know to talk about it because always you say those stupid things I mean what okay since you said that sentence to me what you did can you explain to us what you did here we go brother this is your black stone ready for fornication I challenge you to tell me why the black stone in the Kaaba look like that I will give you three options it's a like a birth defect hmm? is that like a sexual panty like you know you you make you make the Kaaba wear a, a burqa and then only around the stone like a zipper there's a zipper like whoops what is that why why the shape is like this is it true that it used to be a vagina? And this look, this is the leader of Hamas is putting his head inside. And after he kissed it, he was saying, yum, yum, num, num. Take a beer. Israel now is gone, is history. What a crazy cult. I mean, with this all, the, all your religion is about sex. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He invoke his God because his penis is not working, and then the God he go to the kitchen. He make a shish kebab. He send it to the prophet. The guys, do you remember the guy from Afghanistan who left Islam because of the story? He challenged me to prove it. He challenged me to show him the reference. He said this can't be true. I mean, have you a prophet of God? His penis is not working. Muhammad, he tried everything. He turned the music, it's not working. He turned the fan, it's not moving. He uh, he played the anthem, it's not standing up. So that's it, he gave up. So come on, you seek refuge by Allah. So he prayed to Allah, and Allah, he went to the kitchen. I mean, isn't the Muslim they say, if Allah wants something, he say, B is going to be? I mean, do you know to go to the kitchen, and he makes shish kebab, and he cook it, and he put spice? God knows what he put there too. I mean, I don't know, you know. You, you know the thing. I mean, shish kebab will not do the thing. Otherwise, all Muslims will have a very, you know, but they eat shish kebab, but finito. This is why, like, a country like Egypt, very poor country like Egypt, number one product in Egypt is Viagra. What the heck? Anyway. Uh... As they say in China, he lived as a donkey, never came back as a horse. Yeah, but anyway, you know, like, I mean, uh, and then look, look, it worked. After Muhammad, he ate the, the shish kebab, you know, dish. Uh, he got the power of 40 men of heaven. But each man of heaven, he have the power of a hundred men of an earth. Let us make you hungry. So Allah 
Look how powerful this kebab bird are. Kebab, kebab. Allah made the kebab. What is inside the kebab? Allah knows best. And the Zibreel come to the house of Muhammad. Knock, knock, knock. Muhammad. Remember, Muhammad, he, like at that time, he was suffering from hormone because his penis is not working. So his voice was like a female. Who is this? You know? The angel, he said to him, it's me, Jibreel. Muhammad, he said, what's up, Jibreel? It's night time. Open the door. I brought you the shish kebab from Allah. Muhammad, he ate the shish kebab. The hormone, the testosterone, go crazy inside him. Muhammad's voice since then became like, I am Muhammad. Look what happened. Like, hello? This is the shish kebab of Allah? True story. And since he did it, Muhammad, he got the power of 40 men. And then, after he got the dish and he ate the shish kebab, uh, you know, his wife, she reported how good he is in sex. It says here, brother, look how good he is, brother. Once the prophet was bewitched, so he began to imagine that he had done a thing, but in fact, he did not. <laughs> I mean, do you see how good his sex is? And more, 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 more. Here, uh, Aisha, she is reporting something very important. The prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had a slip with his wife's sexual intercourse, but in fact, he did not. Like, what the heck? The shish kebab is not working, brother. So Muhammad, he go in the street, he told them, I was doing boom, boom with all 13 wives. Then they asked the wives, oh, yesterday the prophet, he was doing a lot of boom, boom, huh? He told our husbands, the wife, they say like, what? The guy, he did not even touch us for the last century. Are you there, Israel? And not to forget, when a woman, she spoke about orgasm, the wife of Muhammad, she said, really, the woman, she have that? <laughs> Look how she got Muhammad busted. The wife of Muhammad, she never, ever had orgasm. The woman, she said, she had sexual dream. She had orgasm when she was thinking of a man. She's asking the prophet, look what kind of topic. I mean, look what kind of a prophet he is, the, the, the vagina consultant. So the woman, she saw a liquid in her vagina. She came to the prophet telling her about her liquid. Like, come on. I mean, who is going to tell him except the prophet? A specialist, PhD in vagina. So... Uh, the prophet, he said to her, if she see the liquid, she have to wash. Then Umm Salama, uh, she was like, what? <laughs> does a woman, does, like you see translation, he says, does a woman have sexual dream? The Arabic, it says, which means she have orgasm. Does the woman, she have orgasm? He replied, of course. Of course she does. You see, it's not such a dream. Look, look at the answer. Look how, look how they expose themselves with the translation. Because if it's a sexual dream, then why are you saying, of course, she does? In what way does her child resemble her? See, this is not about sexual dream. It's about the liquid in the vagina, the orgasm. So the wife, she asking the prophet, the women, she have orgasm? Which means Muhammad, he never was able to give his wife orgasm because the wife she was astonished like what the heck what i'm missing here my source is invalid exactly guys our source is invalid we agree with you we showed you the quran and we showed you the hadith and our source is invalid <laughs> This is why we keep saying Quran is invalid, Hadith is invalid, Islam is invalid. 
and the source you are talking about you forgot it's an Islamic source so you Muslim look at this beard of this guy look at look how big his beard look at this I mean this guy is a decent six shake your source is invalid invalid okay yeah we do agree with you i'm showing the quran and i'm showing the hadith i'm showing sahir bukhari i'm showing muslim we agree islam is invalid like your beard be, be honest with me why you don't tell zakir naik what fertilizer you are using for your beard so zakir naik can use it the poor zakir naik he was trying to grow a beard for the last 40 years and it's not there I mean, still there's no beard there. Call your friend Zakura and tell him, this is, are you drinking camera urine? Be honest with me. Your source is invalid. <laughs> Just to show you how stupid Islam is. Muhammad, he ordered the Muslims not to write hadith. He ordered them what? not to write the hadith he ordered him what not to write what he say then the muslim they wrote the prophet he said don't write what i say can you believe stupidity i mean how far the stupidity of this religion i mean the guy he just told you don't write what i say they went and they wrote the prophet says don't write what i say like what the heck not only he said don't write what he says if you write it efface it erase it which means you should not have hadith he just told you don't write hadith you write it what's wrong with you how far is stupidity can go he told you not to write it, he told you to erase it. And then you make it in books, and now we are laughing at it. And the question is, why Muhammad don't want anyone to write what he is saying? Because it's a disaster. Hey people, let us practice Islam together. Please don't write down anything in the chat including me saying don't write anything <laughs> and then you start all of your writing in the chat like what the heck <laughs> oh boy islam is the religion of intelligent or intelligence so look what we start we started with uh, with, with this atheism and darwin and etc and we heard with, with muhammad what you can do actually muhammad he believed in darwinism I can prove it to you. Look what Muhammad uh, Let me try to find you the hadith. Here we go, this is uh, stupid. Pass uh, uh, keyboard. <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, YouTube, <laughs> this is the stupidity of the atheists who always support. Who support Islam you know so I made a video about this hadith uh, <laughs> YouTube they said this is against our guideline like what the heck they try to protect Islam in any way any mean desperate Trying to find the hate in English.
I will find it. Just give me a second. Let us see this one. Just to show you how Muhammad and Darwinism they match. Read with me. And this is Al Bukhari, the Muslim, they cannot deny it. The Prophet said, Who said? The Prophet said. Remember that. A group of the Israeli were lost. Nobody knows what they did. Look at this. Look at the mystery. Look at the action. So they are lost, brother. We do not know where we are. But I do not see them except that the way are cursed and changed into rats. Like what? Like what? And you are telling me that Darwin was not right? How the Prophet of Allah, he knew this. That's so good. He look at the frats and look look at the logic. You remember that guy with the with the chain? You, if you don't have a chain, your mother is uh, you know. Muhammad they have the same logic. Look, for if look look at the logic. How he noticed that those are Jews? Allah cursed them. For if you put the milk of a she camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. Hey Muslims. A rat don't drink the she camel milk, you drink it. Obviously, it's wrong. Be my witness. But by doing that, Muhammad, you notice, oh, they must be Jews. Because Jews don't drink milk camel. That's deep. Look at the connection, brother. Look at the connection. Muhammad is observing the scientist. This is deep observation. You cannot do that unless you are a prophet of God. Look at the observer and scientist. So he noticed that Jews don't drink she camel milk. And rats don't drink she camel milk. Bingo. Now we found the origin of the rats. Darwinism. Okay, I don't know. I can use the same logic with Muslims. Well, donkeys don't drink whiskey. Uh, hello? Donkeys don't eat pork. Wait, oh, what? Oh boy. Stupidity. And they say to you, he's a prophet. Look how much he's obsessed with the Jews, how much he hates them. Even when he look at the rat, he see Jews. He look at the scorpion, he see a Jew. He look at the, at the, at the lizard, he see a Jew. Whatever he look, he see a Jew. Let us blame the Jews. Anyway, guys, it's time to go. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. Uh, don't forget to download the video and share them because we don't keep them for long for we have a lot of people who hate literally my work but in the same time my work is beloved by a lot a lot of people especially in islamic countries millions of indonesian muslims bangladesh india you name it everywhere they watch our videos and our video is making a huge impact in their society. It is shaking the foundation of religion which have no foundation. So I appreciate those who support and download the video, translate at sub subtitle to your language, share it with your people. And I have a request actually, if you are a person who speak Afghani language and you are willing to voluntarily to translate my book, contact me please. We need somebody to translate our book to the Afghani language, and which is Pakistan language too, so we can give it to them for free, totally for free. 
you see I'm giving most of my books for free for sure I need to support myself right I mean all of you you know uh, life nothing nothing for free but I do my best to give most of my books for free and that is done because you know the Lord he provides us and I am very thankful for him and there are some of you here they support us in, uh, in Patreon but those books are a must to translate so we are working now in the Chinese we need somebody to translate to Korean we need somebody to translate to Afghani language but there's many languages still missing we have it our books translated to many languages and I say our books because as you see we are sharing them it's our books you know uh, and the reason I give those books for free uh, I prefer over making money uh, because I will not take with me to my grave one penny more than what I need for that day so as long the Lord he provide and the Lord he give us and the Lord he send good people like you to help us too then there is no need for more the Lord he will provide and the Lord he will give and we give and you give and let us help those people to see and I will really appreciate a big gift from those who like to help by translating to the Afghani language or if you speak Korean or any language it's not included in my you know and like none of those who uh, we did it already so if you know a language if you speak a language and you are willing to do volunteer work and those books we give them for free so the translator's work is extremely important and we need your help so if you care help us and the Lord always will remember you and remember those who translate you do not people do not know you and people do not know me anyway you know but there's one person he know who you are and your work will stay there forever because that is your translation yes it's my book but it is your translation so this is maybe will be the biggest blessing you have in your life that you were not just watching you were working to save Muslims and you did God knows how many who will read your translation of my book and they will leave the cult of Muhammad so I want to say thank you for all of you thank you for your support and until we see you again Christ is Lord Islam is false atheism is false anything except the Lord name is false his name is amazing his act is a glorious he is a miracle and he do miracle his life his birth his death everything about him is miraculous that is God the word miracle is something nobody can comprehend so we call it miracle because it's above our nature it's above normal it is not usual it is something nobody can do it is a superpower we call it miracle that is God God himself is a miracle so let the miracle of God work through you and let the miracle of God be with you thank you and God bless thank you